Hey, what's going on, A-Push people? We have Key Concept 2.3 of the new curriculum for you today. This is the final video of Period 2, which, which goes from 1607 to 1754. So we are two-ninths done with the new curriculum. All right, let's get started. Let's take a look and see what exactly is Key Concept 2.3 saying. Well, the increasing political, economic, and cultural exchanges within the Atlantic world had a profound impact on the development of colonial societies in North America. And again, that's from page 30 of the curriculum framework, which you can download by looking in the description below. So some big ideas as we go through this video. How did the colonists begin to develop an identity during this time? And what impact did religion have on the colonies as well? And, this is, and these are some examples of the cultural exchanges within the Atlantic world. All right, let's look at Roman numeral world. one, Atlantic world, commercial, religious, philosophical, and political interactions among Europeans, Africans, and American native peoples stimulated economic growth, expanded, expanded social networks, and reshaped labor systems. So the 17th century Atlantic trade created a labor market in exchange of goods. We see that there is a growth of slavery in the Americas, and again, this began with the Spanish and the Portuguese Portuguese traders in West Africa. We have what is known as the Middle Passage, which is the shipment of Africans in close quartered ships, uh, and this would last several weeks or months. This was a horrific, horrific journey, where as many as one out of four Africans would die on this journey. You would be cramped close together. You would have to go to the bathroom in the place where you were standing, essentially. You would be chained to other individuals, and you would be fed very little. It was pretty much your worst nightmare on a ship. The triangular trade is something that develops, and this is the, the trade of rum, sugar, molasses, and slaves that were commonly traded between the Americas, Europe, and Africa, those three regions. That's why it's known as the triangular trade. And many merchants defied the navigation acts, which required the colonists to only trade with Great Britain, and they traded goods with the French, the Dutch, and the Spanish. And this is something that we will see the colonists do more and more of as time goes on, and that is trade with other countries, which is a violation of mercantilism and the navigation acts. All right, so what promoted Anglicaz Anglicization or basically becoming more British, using, using more English norms and customs? Well, representative assemblies were similar to English government in the colonies. Those assemblies that the colonists set up were very similar to the English government. Trade between the colonies and England increased contact quite a bit. And also we have enlightenment ideas from England and Europe travel to America, which, was, which were very influential as well. Americans later made similar contributions to the Enlightenment, including Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, and a British-born individual, Thomas Paine, who comes to America as well. Religious toleration in some colonies begins to develop. We see Quakers in Pennsylvania, which were basically tolerant of everybody. The Maryland Acts of Toleration granted to religious toleration for all Christians only. They did not grant toleration for everybody, just Christians. Uh, for example, if you were Jewish in Maryland, you could be put to death under the Maryland Acts of Toleration. Legal systems and customs developed that were very similar to Britain. We had trials by jury. And we also have this this thing called evangelism, which uh, it coincides with the first Great Awakening. And this saw people like George Whitfield from England travel to the colonies to spread religion. This is where you saw people become very emotional during services, and you saw lots of people convert to convert to Christianity or different branches of Christianity. All right, strict racial categories and racial stereotyping emerged among British colonists. Blacks and whites lived in separate living quarters and were segregated throughout the day. And similar to natives, Africans were often seen as savages and less than human to justify poor treatment of them, the harsh treatment. Any resistance to slavery was treated very harshly. This is something to keep in mind throughout uh, going up to and including the antebellum period prior to the Civil War, that any time there's slave resistance, the slave owners are going to crack down more harshly on slaves. The Spanish and the French were more accepting of racial gradations or, or different racial groups. Um, we have the emergence of mulattoes and mestizos in the Spanish Empire. And mulattoes were those individuals that were of European and African ancestry. And mestizos were those individuals that were of European and Native American history. So you see a lot more intermarrying occurring under the Spanish and the French than you do the British.
All right, let's go to Roman numeral two. Britain's desire to maintain a viable North American empire in the face of growing internal challenges and external competition inspired efforts to strengthen its imperial control, stimulating increasing resistance from colonists who had grown accustomed to a large measure of autonomy. And autonomy basically means that you are governing yourself or you have a lot of control over your own decisions. So over time, regional differences in colonies gave way to similarities. And this is seen in the following ways. In other words, the differences between the southern and New England colonies kind of went away over time. And we see this in laws where crimes were redefined. The John Peter Zanger trial was very influential. Um, you have a colonial newspaper which is criticizing a British official. Um, John Peter Zanger is the individual that criticized him, and he was put on trial. And what the jury finds him is not guilty. And this establishes in, the, in America that you could criticize a government official if it was true, whereas in England, you could not criticize a government official even if it was true. We also see institutions develop in, the Amer in America. Colleges were established in different colonies, and this helped promote religion and increase literacy. Out of the first six colleges established in the colonies, four of them were devoted to training priests and promoting religion. Governance with the con within the context of the British imperial system. Let's talk about that. So prior to 1763, 1763 is going to be a very key year, as we'll see in the next um, key concept video. Colonial governments acted independent of parliament. This, er this time period is known as salutary neglect, where the British pretty much left the colonists alone as long as they were making money. And this is going to change after 1763. All right, under mercantilism, the goal is for the mother country, in this case England, to make as much money as possible. And England's goal of creating a unified imperial structure and enforcing strict mercantilist policies was not always successful. In other words, they wanted to enforce mercantilism and make it mercantilism the number one policy with the colonies, and this was not always successful. We have the Navigation Acts, which you talked about earlier. This required colonists to export specific goods only to England or English colonies. And a very well-known um, good was tobacco. This was something that in the southern colonies was grown quite a bit. And according to the Navigation Acts, the colonists could only trade with England or its colonies. The problem was there weren't a lot of people living in England that they could sell to. They had more goods than there was demand. So what do they do? They start to smuggle and sell to other French and Spanish colonies as well. And this led to widespread smuggling from colonial merchants. We had the Dominion of New England develop, which was an idea from England to combine many of the northern colonies into one. Um, you have Massachusetts with the rest of New England, and then later they tried to add New Jersey and New York. And it was led by, it was governed by this guy, Sir Edmund Andros, and what happened was assemblies were eliminated and a new governor was appointed, this guy, who was very unpopular. A short time later, he is so unpopular and the colonists actually overthrow the Dominion of New England and Andros tries to escape, tries to escape the colonies by dressing as a woman. And the Dominion was met with resistance and ended at the same time the Glorious Revolution happened in England in which the king was overthrown. For most of the 18th century, England followed a policy of salutary neglect. That's what I just talked about in the last slide. Again, this idea that colonies were mostly left alone to govern themselves. And England took a hands-off approach to governing. They just kind of let the colonies be as they were. And England was not interfering in day-to-day -day operations. Reasons for resistance to British imperial control. So why were the colonists resisting? Well, solitary neglect led to colonial assemblies having significant power. And they often viewed themselves as parliament. So the colonists are going to get an incredible sense of power from having so from having the policy of solitary neglect in effect. The Enlightenment, which I do have a video on, check the description for that, please, uh, led many to question governments and desire more rights and new forms of government for themselves. And here is a very influential Enlightenment thinker, John Locke. The Great Awakening created more religious diversity and a questioning of authority. During the Great Awakening, you had many people questioning 
religious officials. And this kind of ins will be a forerunner to the American Revolution because you are encouraged to question authority, in this case, England. Colonists often saw themselves as Englishmen, even though English officials did not always agree. We'll see during the French and Indian War, they actually would only promote American soldiers so far. George Washington was limited in how far he could be promoted because he was American. All right, let's talk about some test tips for this key concept. Multiple choice and short answer questions definitely know the impact of the Enlightenment. How did ideas spread? Again, they came from Europe, came over to the Americas, increased contact. You have newspapers, you have readings. Why were they so appealing to individuals? And essay questions, be familiar with reasons for and effects of the new colonial I. Identity. All right, that is everything you need to know about Key Concept 2.3. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you have not already, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel and help me spread the word. If you could throw this up on Facebook or Twitter, I would greatly appreciate it. Let people in your class know, let your teachers know. And don't forget, you can download the PowerPoint for this by following the link in the description. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. I thank you guys very much for watching and have a good day.